the biggest difference between somebody who is just doing a job and trying to run a company or create a channel like YouTube or whatever. Do you guys know what it is? Now, the biggest difference is your tolerance to ambiguity. Okay, your tolerance to ambiguity. And how much can you handle not knowing? That's what defines an entrepreneur versus somebody who's just doing a job. Okay, and you can be entrepreneur even doing a job. For example, if you're a Python developer, you can be an entrepreneur and you can be getting different clients and who you're working with. You can land jobs not just by sitting and sending resumes, maybe you can start networking with people around you. There are a lot of ways to be an entrepreneur. But again, it's a lot about handling that uncertainty and how do you deal with it? Do you have this feeling in your stomach like you're gonna puke not knowing? Or can you be like, this is okay. I'm gonna find out what the road is ahead. I'm gonna plan something out, I'm gonna have a vision and I'm gonna trust my instincts, okay? So it's a lot of that. You know, I failed multiple businesses. I used to have a channel called Chestastic that has like 150 subs, it's dead now. Go look at it, bye. I started other things, other YouTube videos, right? Remember we would make so many YouTube videos, we were just trying to do this HostGator affiliate yeah. marketing stuff. So many. We would literally spend hours upon hours, we would spend weeks recording these videos, scripting it out, trying to make this business. How many businesses have we gone through? We started an Amazon FBA business. Countless, countless businesses. We started um, Quantum Bros. We started uh, developer products, which was about like launching products. Mm -hmm. We reached out to like so many manufacturers in China and built all these relationships only to not lead anywhere and fail. But those failures, other people see and they go, they take a sip of there, they go, told you so. Right, they take a sip of their little told you so. Whereas for us, it's a learning experience and kind of battle scars, so to speak. Without those, you don't, like we won't be here. This exactly. channel wouldn't you be just have here. You to get those references. Yeah, you have to get those references. Without them, you don't really know where you're going. And I mean, great, like they didn't build the platform like Chestastic and failed, but that's the difference between let's say me and somebody else, or maybe, you know, maybe you and somebody else, right? Maybe you both were, let's say 30 at some point, and then you became 31. They went from being 30 to 31 without failing. And you went from 30 to 31 while failing a few things. Okay. And there's a lot of honor in failure. Failure is the only way to proceed forward. When you go to the gym and if you're picking up five pound dumbbells and curling with them, you're never gonna be failing, so that's great. But are you gonna be making any progress? There's gonna be zero progress that you're gonna be making, okay? So failure is actually your indicator that you're going in the right direction. I'm gonna say it again. Failure is your indicator that you're going in the right direction. Okay, failure is your GPS in life. Failure and fear is your GPS in life. Not Google Maps, not Waze, not Apple Maps, not whatever other maps that exists. Definitely not Apple Maps. Even though I love Apple, they just didn't do a very good job with that freaking app. Failure and fear is your navigation in life. All right, as long as you can stand making yourself uncomfortable, you're growing. When you're very comfortable where you are, you are not growing. Not growing is not wrong, but not growing is not making progress. If you're okay with that, good for you. I'm not okay with that. My friend is not okay with that. My other friend is not okay with that. We're never okay with that. We're okay with going with sleepless nights, eye bags, and all kinds of crazy stuff. Question is, are you? If you do want all those results and things that you say you want and the lifestyle that you say you want and the job that you say you want and the impact that you want to make on this world that you say you want, why aren't you willing to put in the work that gets you those things? Do you know it's as easy being exactly where you are as it is going towards your goals and the directions you want to go to?
it takes the same amount of work as being lazy as it takes to be successful, okay? A lazy person has to go through making these excruciating excuses every single goddamn day. They go, I couldn't do this because I'm busy. I couldn't do this because I had all these other tasks and obligations. I couldn't go to the gym and make myself look and feel better because, I don't know, I had to pick up my kids. Right. I couldn't put in this extra work. I couldn't update my portfolio. I couldn't upgrade my LinkedIn. I couldn't, I couldn't, I couldn't, I couldn't, I couldn't. And it's just this giant barrage of excuses. And when they s are sitting there looking you dead in the eye telling you this, you know they're bullshitting. Yeah. You and actually them too know that they're lying. You both know. But you make this nonverbal agreement with your eyes that you're just going to both agree to look the other way, make each other feel comfortable where you are. You're not fat. You're just... But it's like people will say things like that, okay? And it's not true. If you're fat and you're out of shape, that's something you need to work on. If you're not financially secure, if you're not doing the job you need to be doing or you want to be doing or the things that you need to be doing, that's something that has to change. And you need friends and other people around you kind of calling you out on that. Regardless, you have all these people giving you this fake cushion, this fake whatever, Yet, you go to all these places, it's like hospitals, and they interview people who are about to die, and they write down what were the last things on their mind, and what's the last thing they're leaving this planet with. And you know what's the number one thing people say? They say it's regret. What kind of regret? Regret of doing too much? Or regret of not doing too much? And you know what the regret most of the times is? It's of not doing too much of wishing that they tried to do the things and expand themselves to places where they thought they couldn't and things then they never really took a chance and tried them never gave themselves the confidence believed in themselves in themselves enough to do those things okay and not taking those chances so it's a morbid topic but i do want you to sometimes think of that because for some of us, it can jolt us. I know it jolts me and gets me moving, but that's that initial spark, that initial motivation. Then later you have to find your why for why you're doing something and that's gonna keep you going. It's kind of when you open a door, you need that initial energy, but to keep the door open, you need a doorknob in place. So right now, maybe you're in a place where you're procrastinating and you're not, you're just scurrying along and you're just doing your nine to five and you're just stuck in this, in this limbo and you need that initial push. So this is something that I might say that might be coming off a little harsh, but it might be that push that you need. Then later what you need to do is develop a system for why you're doing this, okay? Maybe you're doing this for your family. I know I am doing this in a lot of things for getting my parents a retirement. I'm doing this to give my family support because when I got to the United States, we got in a crazy car accident where everybody in the family came out okay except for my mom. She had two discs, two back discs uh, broken, and we couldn't uh, afford her surgery. So guess what? We waited 12 years. And in those 12 years, you know what happened? Because her back disc was broken, she couldn't really move a lot. She ended up developing diabetes. She ended up gaining a lot of weight. That came with a whole set of another, all these other types of problems. And seeing that kind of broke me as I was growing up because it made me ha have this really deep feeling of helplessness. And I want you guys to understand that it's possible to get out of that. Okay. Like for me, when I was feeling that deep feeling of helplessness, I'm like, how could I get out of this? What's my why? What's my why that could keep me going and doing the things that I'm doing? For example, staying up till 5am, getting two hours of sleep and then just going the next day. I'm thinking about those things. I don't want that to happen to anybody who's close to me where I literally can't, if like, if not help them financially, something like surgery, if we could have gone, if we had the money, we could have gone this a lot earlier. Like one night in the hospital was something like $30,000 and we just couldn't afford it. And that really, 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 really blows. That 
just sucks. Somebody who's so close to you, somebody who you love so much, and you just watch them agonize over this long course of 12 years. So again, for me, that's what keeps me going. That's what keeps me motivated. I don't want this to happen to anybody again. And that's why I'm like, I want to be making a lot of money so I don't have just enough for myself, for but for other people around me. And maybe that could be your why or something like this could be your why as well. You know, you need that initial push to get going. And then you have that why that's like that doorknob that keeps that door open, okay? That keeps your motivation in place. It's a system that keeps you going. So kind of think about those things, enjoy that and move on from that and understand that when you look at life from that perspective where everything is so macroscopic and at such a massive scale, you'll start to see your little problems as these very little things. If you look at this universe and how it's like there's multi universes going on, that little drama that you might have going on with somebody like at work or a family member or a friend, that's nothing. That doesn't even exist. Like the universe doesn't care about that. So for you, if you can start to see all these things at this high of a level, you can start ignoring all the little things that are nagging at you and you can start focusing and going to the things that actually really matter. All right. 